Metals are placed in the order of decreasing reactivity in the reactivity series as shown on the screen. This is based on the reaction of metals with oxygen, water, dilute acids and displacement reaction. That is an easy way to remember the order of the series using a mnemonic. Police Sergeant Charlie Messenger caught me stealing gold plates. However, this does not include carbon and hydrogen. Just remember, carbon is above zinc and hydrogen is above copper. You also might be wondering why it's not included in the mnemonic. This is because carbon and hydrogen are the only non-metals in the reactivity series of metals. So firstly, we'll take a look at the displacement reaction involving metal oxide. We'll start with the reaction of magnesium and copper 2 oxide. When these two are mixed and heated strongly, the end result would be white magnesium oxide. Here's the equation. What happened here is, magnesium has taken copper's place and kicked it out. So the least reactive metal has been displaced from its compound by the more reactive metal. Now if you had heated copper and magnesium oxide, there would be no reaction since copper is less reactive than magnesium. Next, we'll take a look at the metals' reactions with water. A basic understanding is, metals above hydrogen in the reactivity series react with water or steam to produce the hydrogen gas. If the metal is reacting with cold water, the products would be the metal hydroxide and hydrogen. If the metal reacts with steam, the products would be metal oxide and hydrogen. But when it comes to metals below hydrogen, they simply don't react with water or steam. Water's reaction with potassium, sodium or lithium is very vigorous. Calcium's reaction with water will result in calcium hydroxide, which sparingly soluble in water. Some of it might dissolve, but most of it is left as a white solid. If magnesium is added to water, there is almost no reaction. But if magnesium is super clean, a few bubbles of hydrogen may form, but it will soon stop again. That is because the magnesium becomes coated by magnesium hydroxide, which is insoluble, thereby preventing any more contact with magnesium. Next, we'll take a look at the reactions of metal with dilute acid. We'll first take a look at a practical video. Magnesium reacts vigorously with a lot of fizzing. The test tube will get hot. Zinc has a steady reaction and the test tube gets warmer. Iron has a slow fizzing and the test tube will slightly get warmer. Copper would have no change. Some common observations for all these reactions, except the copper reaction, would be the gas produced gives a squeaky pop on a lighted splint and a colorless solution will be formed. It's worth noting that all these reactions are exothermic, meaning they give out heat. The pattern in the metal's reactions with acid is the same, but the rate of their reaction will differ. For metals above hydrogen, metals plus acid would result in salt and hydrogen. So for metal plus dilute sulfuric acid, the salt would be metal sulfate. And for metal plus dilute hydrochloric acid, the salt would be metal chloride. Copper, silver and gold do not react with these type of simple dilute acids. Potassium, sodium, lithium and calcium react too violently with acids to be carried out in a lab. Magnesium also reacts vigorously with acid as mentioned before.
Well, that's all for today. If you preferred it instead of a whack in the face with your textbook, then like and consider subscribing.